PK in the universe and I'm back again and today I'm here to talk about the concept of the complete collection. Like what is the complete collection? Should people be going for a complete collection of any video game system? That's what I want to talk about. First of all I want to talk about some collections I think people should go for just because it would be the easiest and I want to talk about the one video game system that I would actually go for a complete set of. So here we go. First up, let's talk about a few collections. Um, I'm gonna talk about a few specific video game systems that have some of the smallest libraries. Now this isn't every single video game system with a tiny library, but these are some that I thought, oh, getting these would be achievable. Some of these numbers might not be 100% accurate because I'm getting these numbers from a little place called the internet. And I don't necessarily trust everything I see on the internet, but this is what I've found based on my limited amount of research. Oh, and also there's the cult topic of, well, what if homebrew games come out? Do those count? And it's like, obviously they're not officially ones, but some people might consider them part of their collection, you know, even though they're not a part of the officially licensed collection or a contemporary collection. Anyways, here's a few of them. First up, we got the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast, as far as my research says, has 248 games. Up next is the Wii U, which has 164, but maybe it's more because Axiom Verge was of course released from Limited Run Games. Now, do you consider Limited Run Games to be an official release? Because guess what? These particular games were never in retail stores, even though there are Limited Run Games that have been you know, sold at Best Buy, this is not one of those. So. Do you, can, do you need that to have an official complete Wii U collection? A lot of people might say yes, and some people might be like, well, it's from Limited Run, does it, I don't know. You know, because you could certainly make the argument, because it was released in such a limited amount, and was never on retail shelves. So, for you personally, you might think that doesn't count, but a lot of people will tell you it does count, so a lot of differing opinions on that one. Up next, you got the Atari Lynx, which has 76 games. But the Atari Lynx uh, community, there's a lot of homebrews out there and people have made. So maybe people you know, feel like, oh, those should be a part of an official collection just because the Atari Lynx collection is so small. But Atari Jaguar has 50 games. The 32X has 36 games. And again, these are all North American games is what I'm talking about as far as releases go. So I don't know how each each region's probably different, but my point is, I mean, let's say these numbers are a little bit off. The point is these are all small collections. That's the big thing I wanna hit home with here is like, if you're gonna go for something, go for a small collection. If, you were, if your goal is to say, I have a complete set of something, going for a small collection is way more logical than trying to collect every NES game. But also there's different kinds of going for a complete set. Are you going for a complete set of loose carts? Are you going for a complete set of it's got to be complete in box? Or maybe if it can be missing the manual, maybe it's not missing the manual. Um, what kind of condition is? And, you know, there's a lot of different ways somebody can go for a complete set. So I want to talk about that. You know, I mean, I personally think if you're going to go for a complete set of Make it something that's achievable and going for a smaller collection is much more achievable or likely to be achieved than going for some, you know, like there's 700 games in the collection because, you know, and that's something that's really going to break the bank too. Not to say that there aren't some really rare games in some of these collections, but there's probably fewer rare games than there are compared to a lot of bigger collections. So that's one of the big advantages of going for a smaller collection. Me personally, when it comes to all these particular um, consoles that I mentioned, I would never go for a complete set of any of these. And the reason it comes back to my own personal views of, I don't want to have Garbo games in my collection, which is something I mentioned in my previous video is like, yeah, I don't ever want to go for a complete Wii U set just because there's a lot of crappy games on the Wii U. I, you know, some people think I'm a huge Wii U fanboy or Nintendo fanboy, but I'll be the first to tell you there's a lot of Garbo games. Not as many Garbo games on the Switch, but the Switch has a lot of games. So that's why there's a lot of garbage games on the Switch, but there's a lot of good games too, you know, and a lot of good games and bad games on every system. So that's always been my personal philosophy is don't go for a complete set just because do you really want to have games in your collection that you'll never play? Now there's one system that I would go for a complete set, and that is the Evercade. 
And the reason is because, well, is it because I have Evercade on the brain and I've been making a ton of Evercade videos? Well, yes, but it's because it's gonna be the easiest system right now that I could ever possibly collect for. The best time to have started collecting for the Evercade was in 2020 when it came out. The second best time is today, honestly. There's a lot of games that are gonna be harder to find, obviously, like uh, the Technos Collection, and the Oliver Twins collection, of course, are going out of production this month. And the two Namco collections are gonna be going out of production in June. So if you're just getting into Evercade collecting and you're going for a complete set, this is the time to go get those because they're gonna get more expensive later on. I don't know how much more expensive. Could they run in 50 to to $100? It's possible, but it, it's pretty unlikely though. I mean, for the most part, that it would go for that, continue to go for that. And the nice thing too is, even though they're going out of production at you know the end of the month, Supposedly, there's still going to be enough stock that'll be available throughout the year. So if you miss out, you know, don't give in to FOMO necessarily right away, but I would recommend getting them now while you still can. So yeah, I think if I was going to go for a complete set, it would be Evercade. You know, here's the deal. Most of the games that I've bought, I've bought about 12 games so far, and I can honestly say I I've always found at least one game on every cartridge that I've enjoyed. There's always at least one game on that on each collection. So to me, it doesn't feel like I'm collecting garbage games. Now there's four cards that do worry me a little bit. You know, the Jellico collection, the Worms collection, the Mega Cat 2 collection. Uh, there was another one, I can't remember what it is. Oh, I'll just show a picture of it, it comes to mind. But there's a few, a few where I'm kind of like, Hmm, I don't know if I will like these, you know, because I haven't gotten them yet, but I think I will. Oh, the Pico Collection. That's the one. Pico Collection, too, because it's got nothing in sports games. So there's always games, I guess you could say in the Evercade, that worry me that I haven't quite, yeah, you know, I haven't gotten yet, but some people have complained about. But who knows? Maybe someone in my family might enjoy those. Like, my wife really likes puzzle games, you know, so maybe they're one of those cartridges has puzzle games on them or something. I think, like, the Worms one has none, maybe, but... Yeah, Evercade would be the one I would go for because it'd just be so easy. There's only 26 games right now and there's going to be 30 total so far by the end of the year as far as games that have been announced. Evercade for me is just a no-brainer and I think about half the people who have an Evercade are you know, in that mindset of I'm going for a complete set. But I also understand the other perspective of, yeah, there's some, you know, games they might not be interested in. Another kind of collecting people do too is going for a complete subset. Like me personally, I have every eight and 16 bit Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. That's a personal point of pride for me as far as a collector, you know, is I, and I don't, I don't care if they're complete in box or not. Again, you know, some people are like, I have to have them all complete in box. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the, uh, collecting uh, going for a full set what are your thoughts is there something you're going for a full set of comment below i'd love to hear what you have to say thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe thanks bye